Well, greetings, everybody. Sorry for the um, sorry for the uh, problems yesterday. Um, some technical difficulties. Our IT or crack IT team, also known as my assistant coaches, were uh, we were unable to resolve. You know, we're, we're getting some of these Zoom bombs, and we're you know kind of quickly learning how to. Uh, block some of these people who are trying to kind of break in with some inappropriate comments and images and things like that. So we couldn't we couldn't resolve that, and so we wanted to make sure we had a, a kind of a safe environment. I can't promise you that some young kid is going to jump in here and and draw something inappropriate, but we'll do our best to uh, block them out. That's why I have producer Will Corrigan to my right. And uh, why don't we get right into it? I, I I hope that we'll have time to get to a drill, but I, I felt like trading that off for um, some more um, X's and O's and um, film breakdown. And, and, and again, I think, you know, besides maybe learning some new terminology or a new way to express uh, a concept that you're learning, I think it, it gives you an insight on how, you know, personally, how I like to do film. Um, you know, I, I can turn a 20 second clip into a 20 minute epic. Uh, I know that about myself, uh, but that's kind of the way I, way I do it. So hopefully you're getting some new terminology and some new perspective on how to, to coach your guys. And if they are learning ways to watch themselves uh, on film so they can self critique themselves, I think that's a real bonus. Uh, I picked four clips from this uh, PLL championship game and um, you know, both teams, I think, were two of the three or four best defenses in, in the league. And uh, some similar philosophies. Obviously, the Maryland guys have an unbelievable legacy of, of team defense and individual defense. And, uh, um, and so it was a contrast in styles, uh, but a real sense of support and how do you, how do you collapse and how you cover um, – skip lanes. And so I think you'll see the contrast um, as we go on here. So here's, here's a possession from, uh, you know, a game that, you know, the, um, I'm going to turn off the sound here, right? Uh, I got it. Is, um, is, you know, th this game, the whip snakes were dominating this, this game. And, you know, the, I think they were, you're doing a really good job in their one-on-one -on -one matchups, but also, you know, Maryland's team, which compl comprised a lot of these players, were, were always very good uh, skip passers. And, you know, and being able to, to throw a skip pass while still presenting yourself as a threat is one of the really challenging things for any defense to try to defend, you know, whether it was, you know, Rambo skipping during the slide and recovery or Connor Kelly or any of the other really good players that they had. I think that put a lot of pressure on the, on the slide and recovery mentality of, of, of the Redwoods D. So you're gonna see a little bit, of, little bit of that here as we go. You know, this, this is an invert and you can see, you know, a Jack Neer is starting to collapse. This is Jack Neer right here. You can see some of the movement as this invert is, is taking place. You can see, you know, Apple trying to play and create a ball you man. Uh, triangle. Um, whoop, went back there. So jogging back into the invert, you can see, you know, each team during this time, I think one of the, the things that uh, high school guys need to learn is to try to take advantage of this time. You know, so whether you're setting up an invert defense that you've created, or just going to play a dodge and read um, defense this time as this, you know, as this offense is set up and then the second part of his dodge begins. This is really a great time defensively to kind of organize yourself. Who's the slide? Who's your second slide? What's your perimeter defense? What stance do you want them in? How are they oriented toward the ball? So it's definitely something you can pass on to it. Ironically, one of the things back in the day that I felt that Maryland was really good at was, and I remember Mike Chanchuk doing this, is that they would, they would jog back here, and if they were playing against a team that was playing a, an invert defense, that they would break off the dodge and try to attack and try to catch a defense in that moment where they were 
going from their normal base defense into this predetermined invert defense. So they don't do it here, but that's just a, a side note. I have a memory in my head of, of, of Mike Chanchuk doing that back, back in the day. So here they are, they're carrying back into their, their um, invert. And you can see there's all, already a lot, lots of music, uh, lots of movement. You know, and I think one of the things that the, the whip snake did very, whip snakes did very well. Watch this guy. I think this is uh, Jay Carlson right here, this, this player right here. Watch how much he moves in the next two to three seconds and how difficult that makes that on Garrett Eppel. So here's Garrett Eppel, X, and uh, Jay Carlson is number one right there. But I want you to watch number one. Comes in here, he dives, and he comes back into that space. And so that two and three part cut is really hard for a defense to play. Because look at how Garrett Eppel, Garrett Eppel is trying to stay sideways here. This is Carlson, right? And now he's, you know, because of this movement by him right there, that's putting a lot of pressure on their defense. John Sexton's turned his back. Garrett Eppel is squared up right here, you know, and, and we know from the previous webinars that when you're square, squared up and don't have ball pressure, this is, this is where those skip lanes can kind of open up and those looks can kind of open up really easy when you don't have ball pressure. And now you got this Dodger who's above GLE, no ball pressure, and your slide guy is completely squared up here. So when you're teaching your guys, I think you want to work on this guy trying to stay sideways for as long as possible. So the concept of staying sideways allows you to finish that slide and allows you to recover and do a little bit of in between. Maybe he recovers here, maybe he finishes the slide, maybe he sticks around and slides at this angle, maybe he goes to an inside roll. The sideways stance becomes really, really critical. And then that sideways stance means this guy's sideways stance and his sideways stance and his and his are all critical to support the guys who are on the front porch, the guys in white that are, that are really dangerous. So you can see the pressure that the spacing and the two part cuts that the whip snakes are doing puts pressure on here. The, the other thing is a small skill to teach our offensive guys. So I talked about the two part cut of Carlson here. Remember he came from here to here and now he's cutting into this space. And he's what you're calling mirroring as this guy carries He's, this guy right here is mirroring, be trying to get behind Apple because Apple's decided not to slide. So Apple's now in this process of like, all right, who's taking who? What you'd like to see right here, and it's one of those things that you can practice, is that Sexton can obviously stay with him, or Sexton could tell him to go here. So Apple could go here, Apple could go here, you know, Sexton could recover back out to the perimeter. So you need. This is one of those things where communication becomes really critical because Apple didn't slide. And now he's in that kind of no man's land. But I think one of the things that really good offenses are good at is this, is this kind of carry to nowhere to drag the slide guy. And, and this carry becomes the time where this guy can get his hands in his eyes. So Apple is not sliding, so he's trying to recover. Am I going here? Am I gonna go here? He doesn't know yet, and we don't know yet. But this, this drag, this carry, allows the guy to get his hands, and you know, Maryland was always really good at finding skip lanes. They don't find the skip lane here, but he drags this carry, and now he just makes, you know, potentially gets the hockey assist. So he drags that, and now one of the things that you know, when, when, when this guy still had the ball, I'm going to go back a second or two here, Olna, before he passed the ball, All right? So he still has the ball. This defender right here, this is Jack Neer, is doing a great job of playing this split. There's a split over here. You don't see both guys. But there's a guy here, and there's another guy out here. You can't see him. He's, he's out in this direction above the two point line is, you know, offensively, 
you know, this guy right here, number one, this, this one I'm pointing to, he'd, he'd be much more of a threat if he could kind of move into the skip lane here because now that would make it more difficult to play out that two-on-one. And that would put more pressure on, on Glaze. Not only would have to support here, but you'd have to worry about that skip lane. So, you know, this guy not being in a threatening spot here yet means one can play two. And this is a great decision by, by this guy right here just to say, you know what? I don't have anything great. This guy's not in a skip lane like, right now, so I want to just move the ball. So he moves the ball, and you can see the two-on-one right now. And, you know, one of the things that you can also see that's a really good job by Eddie Glazner is he's, you know, working to get sideways. He's turning and pivoting, supporting the crease right here because Apple is in that slide decision as this guy, you know, carries. All right, so Apple is recovering. Sexton's doing what he's doing. Glaze is up in here supporting. And then you're seeing, right, we had that two-on-one right here where, where Jack Neer was helping on that skip lane. But watch, watch Glaze in the middle here as this ball moves. He does a really good job. All right, the ball moves, throw, throw. And this is like a, a great little thing from an offensive player standpoint. You know, he, he pauses for a second to see, you know, is there anything inside? Because he's smart enough to know that the green team was just in kind of a slide and recovery. So he looks for a second. He's, he's so far out. He's at like, say, 22 yards. Him dodging right now is not the worst thing that could happen. But what he's seeing is if I, if I throw throw here cleanly, this is a long approach. And, you know, and if you haven't coordinated, you know, Sexton and, and Apple, it's these two guys right here, this is, this is Sexton, that's Apple. If they didn't coordinate cleanly, during this dodge from this guy, then there's an opportunity not only for him to dodge when he gets the ball, but also feed. So this is a great little play that you want to reinforce with your offensive player. Sneak a peek inside to see if there's thing. But if you're just a transfer guy, transfer cleanly and get it on the guy's stick. And so you're going to see how long that approach is when that ball gets there. So now ball's here. You know, this defender, Eddie Glazer, is trying to make – this approach, which is a difficult one, as we've talked about, this guy, you know, you're making this long approach. Remember, he came from like right about here. So two-part approach. We talked about this that the other day. And, you know, this guy's got the ability, the guy with the ball right now, he can feed, he can come, go this way, he can go that way, he can hitch, he can split. And he can double move with almost impunity because he knows he's got all this space and because, remember, uh, Eppel, who was your slide guy over here a few seconds ago, he was evaluating this slide by this guy. And now he's now had to recover and come back here and, and set himself up for the slide. And, and the other thing I want you to notice is this is, I think, Ryan Drenner, this guy right here. I want you to watch his footwork for the next few seconds. It's pretty good. You know? Now the pass isn't delivered, and we'll, we'll talk about why there, but I want you to watch, watch the interior of the white team's offense. This guy pulls away, and this makes it more difficult. He pulls it away, he goes here, then he comes here, then he steps here, then he steps here a little bit, and then he steps away and gets the feed. I mean, that's like a four-part cut. And if you're an interior offensive player, whether you're a, whether you're a Dodger, or a crease guy, that footwork, the efficiency of that footwork is so difficult on a defense, particularly if you're Apple. And so what you'd like to see because of that approach defensively, you know, and I go, I know you're worried about two pointers in this league. And, you know, so I'm looking at it from my perspective that there's no two pointers. And from your perspective, if you're a high school or youth coach, there's no two pointers. But what things you'd like to see now is kind of a pull down here more of a sideways presentation here because he's not sure which way this guy's going to dodge. He could go underneath, he could hitch, he could roll. So apple has got to be prepared to slide in basically 180 degrees right now because he doesn't know. So staying sideways becomes really important. And when you see the footwork that Drenner does here, which is really impressive, you can see why that's important. 
So he gets here. This is a really good approach by, by, by Glaze. You know, he gets some ball pressure. You know, you got to trust that you're going to have some support here. You can see why it's going to be important here for, for Near to get here and for, I don't know who that's, Salcedo or Harbison, whoever that is, to come down here and help. But this is a great dodge by this, this, this uh, offensive player. He gets here, he sells his shot, and he tries to get a lever feed. But you can see that I don't think this is a deflection, but the fact that Jack Near gets to this spot, and remember, his guy is not in the screen right here. The fact that he's able to get here narrows that lane. He doesn't get a deflection, but I think if it's a, you know, I think this Dodger is trying to lead him to open space away from the stick lane of, of Jack here. And now, it, it, and, be, and that and the ball pressure by, by, by Eddie affects the quality of the pass. It's a ridiculous feed and great footwork by, by Drenner. Um, you know, coming back to Eddie Glazner's ball pressure here, you know, you know, you don't want the lead wrap is a dangerous thing, which is what he does there. Remember, a sec, if, you, if you go back a second or two, his stick was out here, but because he wrapped, he's, he's vulnerable to the step through, which is, you know, now this is a shot show. This is a great job by this offensive player. And he, he, he levers it and just, you know, it's a little bit off target. So there's a lot of good there. I think it's a great move out of, uh, up the hitch into the step through. I don't like the lead wrap, but Eddie's still able to get effect the glove, which affects the quality of that pass. And this guy, uh, Jack Near's collapse helped that skip lane. So when you're, you know, a lot of times when I'm watching film with, with, with my guys, you know, I talk about, you know, narrowing skip lanes, a skip lane that's, you know, two yards wide versus one that's, you know, 16 inches wide. That can be the difference between good defense and great defense, good defense and great defense, or a goal or, or an assist or a, a ball not getting through. So you, you, you want to kind of highlight that when you're, when, you know, little things when you're, when you're talking with your guys. So let's go on to the next clip. I think this is from the, um, oh, it's like coming back to the same one. Oh, I'll get to the, uh, uh, let's see. yeah, okay. So going, going to another clip here. So this is the whip stakes defense. And you see this a lot. You're seeing this a lot in college game, these, these clips, um, you know, right along GLA. And the, you know, because of the, uh, you know, the really good cover guys that the, that the whip snakes had, they were able to press out and, and make that wider. You know, ideally, you know, you like to see this, this pick um, kind of right about here, not so close to the goal. Um, because sometimes the guy tries to come underneath and get to the front and wide enough that if the guy does jump it, this guy can roll into space. So that's, you know, but when it's so wide like this, you have teams that can, you know, stack here, stack and whack, and now it gives room for this guy to get through and for this guy to get around. So, and you've seen a lot of teams doing this. You get away with it in the pro game. And you see teams getting away with this guy shoving this guy. It's kind of a thing that the referees aren't calling as much. So he shoves him and kind of sometimes can bump him into the Dodger, which gives time for this guy to get around and re-meet re, re him somewhere else. So obviously you can't shove in high school and you can get away with a little bit in college. But you can see because this is so wide here that they can stack and – give the ability for this defender to get underneath, you know. He obviously still had room to, to, to guard him here, but the price for that a lot of times if, if this guy goes here is that by trying to avoid that pick, he can get beat. And what I mean by that is they made a decision coming into the game to, you know, we're, hey, we're going to look at picks and we're not going to go above picks. A lot of times if you try to go above this, in his, in his desire to avoid the pick, he moves closer to the Dodger and you get a lot of great ball pressure here, but then the guy just kind of pins him and gets a straight line run. So that's one of the prices of going above a pick is you get short ball pressure, but you get pinned next to the Dodger. And if you're deciding that you're not gonna switch, you get, you know, you get a stack here and then you get this guy running right at the goal. So. 
I think that was kind of the logic of uh, the whip snakes on this on this two man step. So they were able to get through, and you can see this this defender starting to move into his off ball roll here, which is really important. You know, they didn't get the switch, so they move the ball, throw, right? They're they're doing it. And you see a lot of high school teams do this. They're trying to take away that throw throw, right? They weren't they were staying with their matchups over here on this stuff that happened over here, and so they didn't have to collapse as much worrying about this two man over here because they didn't have to collapse as much. This guy's approach is real short. And as a result, they can take away uh, this dodge. And maybe they weren't going to dodge because it was a, a long stick on a, a midfielder, but regardless, they're jamming up the timing and the flow of the green team's offense. So now it becomes another two man. It's a really good job by Cav. I think he kind of came in, looked like he was clearing through and then breaks it off. For a pick. That's a good little thing to teach your young players. Instead of just running a pick where the guy just goes, hey, why don't I just come and set a pick here? He kind of sets the guy up and puts potentially puts pressure on this defense defender who's on cap. So it becomes another two-man, right? It's, it's a pick and a pop, you know, because of, I think, the location and what looked like there was going to be contact on that pick. You know, I think this is a good decision. You know, the, your potential, if you don't switch, you're giving up, you know, a guy running down the alley and potential help coming adjacently and potential guys slipping into the space. So they, they make a switch and now they pop and now they get the matchup they want. I think, I think one of the things that, that high school teams do poorly is if they work to get this matchup, you know, we used to call it, you know, alerting, you know, alerting everybody, hey, Cab has got the ball. We got a matchup that we like, you know, short stick on a short stick with, a, you know, a lefty being able to dodge to his strong hand. A lot of high school teams will just pull the ball out and make sure everyone gets in the perfect place. And all that's going to do is serve the defense. And so what you want to do is make sure you have your spacing offensively so you can get right to it because that'll just make it more difficult for the defense. So, they have, they have a short stick. You can see he's trying to channel him maybe back toward his right. And so you can see his orientation is to make it more difficult for him to go to a strong hand, which I like. I like that mentality. I don't like to be too militant about it because if you, get, if you force a guy one way, he could potentially get back to what he likes. You're just trying to make it difficult. So he tries to meet him, right? A lot of stop and go. Dodge. You can see this defender doing did a really good job. He was looking, you know, he took a peek over here to see, hey, is this guy going to be prepared to go? Is there a guy popping into his space? You can see this guy is coming down to potentially help on him if he goes. So you got a lot of little things happening. You can see him in a really good stance. You know, he's trying, he's in a good ball, you man, triangle. He's, he's looking to see, is anybody going to come into my space? Am I going to have to help? So it's a really good job by the, by the white team's defense, right? So you're creating these double moves. And I do remember this about Maryland. Maryland was all – they loved this, this trail double team. Like if you felt like a guy was going to roll back, that you could come, you know, you could come down and get him there. And if you rolled back, you know, come, come that way. But they're, they're – they're doing that in a way with great preparation. You can see 83 has come down to help on the crease. You know, and Grant, he's got, a, he's got a split here, right? This guy's pulling down to help. He's trying to get sideways. They got two people committed to the ball. And you've heard me say this a million times. When that happens, you better have your, your guy, your off ball people in the right place. And again, yeah, you're vulnerable to twos, but I mean, frankly, how many twos are in this, you know, is there one or two a game every game? I'm not saying that's not important, but take away easy ones, I think, is really important. Number, uh, this defenseman, everybody plays this def differently, does a really good job of looking at his man and seeing this dodge. And what I would say offensively is you want, you want to get yourself to a dangerous spot so he can't help as much as he would like. So, you know, they're chasing this double team, and now – you know, because, and I think this is really important. I, this is a good look. You know, it's a little deep, 
and maybe a little bit long, but you can see both the goalie and this recovery guy are scraping this lane and this defender. They have three people affecting, you know, the ultimate destination of this ball. You got this stick right here, you got this stick right here, and you got the goalie stick. But what they also have is I think 36 is doing a really good job of if he had to come here, if that ball got through, he's going to be able to help. And eight, remember, 83 came all the way down to help on this cut. And what the offense isn't doing, if I had to be critical, is that this guy hasn't gotten to a dangerous spot. So that if Cav gave him the ball, he could push the corner and force this two-on-one either. You know, he's got to come down, he's got to collapse, or you throw a throw and Joe Walters is ripping that thing from here. So you'd want this guy to be in a more dangerous spot. But you can see, you know, they had a lot of help. And, and I, I like how they play out this two-on-one ground ball. It's physical. They get it. That's a great ground ball where the guy scoops, you know, and, and curls away, which you have to practice. He curled, you know, curl, curl, and then guys making themselves available so you can clear the ball. His first look is probably over to this defenseman, but since he doesn't have great ball pressure yet, he can drag this guy and then throw that pass and you're you're up and out. So I think there was a lot of a lot of good things for the for the white team's defense there. All right. So now you're now we're back to our uh, next uh, let's see what clip. Go to our third clip here. Okay. All right. So I'm over my time, which is pretty standard. Hopefully uh, people are still seeing some uh, value here. Um, you know, setting up, you know, the pole's taken away this dodge. So you got a top center dodge, right? You're seeing a really good job by this guy, you know, turning his head. For the last three or four steps, he was, he was turning his head, trying to see what was behind him. Where's this dodge going? Having a view of the dodge. What's my role? You know, potentially listening from the off ball defense. Like this footwork, you have to practice. And a lot of times coaches practice it with doing like some simple pregame drills with like, hey, backpedal, sideways run, shuffle, chop. Like it looks like just a BS drill or just something that everybody does that you don't practice. But that's one of those things that you want to really do. And you do it in an athletic stance. You know, we do it um, at Harvard as part of our shedding drill, which, uh, which is somewhere on the internet. Um, but the, uh, you're, you're practicing moving in relation to the ball, which if you don't practice in some sort of drill, you can't expect your guys to be good at it. And one of the prices of not doing it is that you'll see guys square up and stare at a dodge because that's just easier. And you want to practice the choreography of how you move in an off-ball role. Because if you practice it, when you get to the game, it'll feel like second nature. It's almost like when you watch some of these quarterbacks or cornerbacks do footwork drills. The quarterbacks are, you know, backing up in the pocket. and They're moving left and they're practicing a rusher coming at them or, you know, pressure coming from the blind side. Is that they do that move and then end with a pass because – the pocket isn't always perfect, just like the clear through isn't always predictable. So you want to practice that. And you make up drills and use your terminology to do that. So here comes a dodge down the alley. You know, Brent Adams doing a little bit of a shot show where he's got a stick up in the air. To, and that usually, you know, can freeze and really put a lot of pressure on a defense. Uh, so I like that, you know, teaching that to dodges, you know, whether it's an elbow pump or a subtle curl of the head of the stick that can sometimes get your defender to raise his stick that you can now step through on the second dodge. So squares him back up again. And now you got this, you know, this popping behind the ball, you know, kind of a two man, you know, had one here, two here. And because of the stop and go nature of the dodge, you know, the white team is, is electing to, you know, keep this guy in the slide roll. And if you're going to do that, you better be prepared for your, your, your next guys having to go here. And then potentially your if you're going that way, your next guys rotating. So you got to love the stance and the orientation from the, from the white defenders right there. Right. You know, re-dodge, 
you know, this is a really hard pass. And I don't know if he's right-handed, but I think he is, Brent Adam. That's a really hard pass. And, and, and because it's a really hard pass you're, you, and with your weak hand, you, your, your defenders, who have all kind of come down into the paint and are thinking about you know, protecting this area, you, you, you feel like you have time to make this approach. And which is, I think, what the white team is, is considering here. And again, what you're not seeing, you're seeing the shadow from this attackman. If you're teaching this, or you're playing against a team that's trying to hedge and, and squeeze space adjacently from the dodge side pipe, you got to get this guy to a threatening spot. That's just a critical, it's a critical thing. So, but 83, which, which I think is one of the Bernhards, is making that bet. I can get back there and close out. And because it's a weak hand, it's not a perfect uh, pass, right? And now trying to make this, trying to make this play, right? But you can see, um, you know, the, 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 the dodge going back into this direction. This is an important thing relative to here. So watch this. So they slide. So you have two people committed to the ball. So obviously you want this pass to be, you know, you know this pass. You want this to be a you know, great pass. If it's not, then it buys time as the, uh, the defense begins to recover or rotate. What happens next is what you really need during a slide and recovery is great communication. So, you know, where, who, where is this guy going to go? Where are they going to tell him to go? He was the guy who just slid. Where am I going? I'm going recovering to the crease. Am I chasing the pass? You know, am I, am I going to the middle? Who's going to tell me what to do? And it's one of those things that from a, from a drill standpoint, practicing sliding and recovery it, and then practicing the language that goes into it, again, like everything else, you'll get better at it. You're not going to get perfect on slide decisions. And I'm not sure if that was a great slide decision, but they made it. And so that decision was gone. What you control is where are we going to tell him and where to go and what, and what to be now, right? So now he recovers, and you can tell he's looking around not sure, I don't see anybody, right? I don't see anybody in my area, right? Should I come back and be the slide guy again? And, you know, what you, you know, what's helping the white team is that the green team right now has, I think, three people below GLA. That means you can have a guy floating around in that scenario because look all the white guys above GLA, one, two, three, four, five, six, and I only see three, maybe four green offensive players. So that's a win. You can screw that up if you, if you want and still survive. All right. So now you can see now there's a realization of space that I need to cut. Like look, look at, you know, four guys and not threatening spots and six white defenders all in, I wouldn't say, I'm not going to say he's in a great spot, but, he's getting away with being this slide guy or this help guy because the green team's offensive players are all below this white, this yellow line right here. So, you know, you give up, you know, a settled underhand, you know, shot with a slide guy closing out on him. I, you know, I think that's a win for the white team. So we got one more, one more clip. Then we'll go to the uh, recruiting conversations. Will, let me know if there's any questions that pop up. All right. Okay. So this is, you know, I think one of the things that the, uh, that the uh, whip snakes were really good in this game was early offense. And again, it was the thing that, that Maryland was always really good at. So not surprisingly, it, it, it translated. Um, you're coming down and right now you got, you know, it's, it's four on four, and then, you know, you got an early test, you know, and, and Rambo had a really good game against Landis in this game. Um, you know, I think, you know, he, his footwork is so good, and he sells the legitimacy of his right-handed uh, move so well that – and then spins out of it that – and then you throw in his, you know, his mass and his size. I think, you know, it was a really good day for him against, uh, against Landis. You know, but but now you're here. Now you're in this early offense, and you're like, okay, one, you know, one, two, three, four, four against four. 
that's easier to score on. And you, you want to practice with your team. If you're, from an offensive standpoint, you want to practice being good during the substitution period. From a defensive standpoint, you want to practice being good because you can take advantage of teams that relax or, or too matchup focused or they look in the wrong direction as the ball right now is approaching GLE. You know, two really good guys going at it, but a lot of space, you know, for, for Rambo to get up to, to the island, which is where he's, you know, really, really dangerous. So when you're coming onto the field, when you're from a defensive standpoint, you definitely want to come on an awareness of where the ball is. You obviously want to know where your man is. But I think you know, if, you, if the ball is already at GLE and there's a one-on-one -on -one going on, again, not minimizing the fact that there's a two-pointer in this league, but most of the people who are watching and listening are not playing in the PLL, is you got to you know, give up a guy running at you from 25 yards if it means you can help a guy who's getting dodged at GLA. So it's just one of those things that you want to practice and you can come up with certain drills. We won't have time to lay out a drill on that but uh, today, but it's, it's definitely something you want to practice, defending early offense and obviously playing early offense from an offensive standpoint. So you're coming in, and now you can see that Rambo's gotten up to this space, right? They are... These guys, so this is, it looks like Joe Walters and, you know, Joe Walters and maybe Salcedo, can't tell, on the green team, right? You can see because uh, Rambo had worked to, to, a, to a place where he's as good as anybody in, in the game in, in making plays, whether a, a dodge for himself, right? Maybe not to the middle because it's congested, but him coming – question marking. He had question marked and scored earlier in this game. And you can see that Apple is, is concerned about that, right? So he's in, in trying to evaluate whether he's going to have to slide. You can see that glazner has got to think about Drenner. We talked about Drenner's footwork earlier. And I think there's, there's another attackman back here who, who wants to work, if he can, to get to a threatening spot. The more he becomes a threat, the less Glaze can help, Glaze being this guy. So standing behind here and being irrelevant is not a great place to be when, when your teammates got to a really good spot. But these two guys become really important. Salcedo, it's called Salcedo and Walters. Again, being cognizant of a two-pointer, but not giving up an easy one. And um, Carolunas becomes important too because he's got to help here and he wants to help on this skip lane too. So a lot of stuff going on. But, you know, he gets up to a really good spot. And you can see, again, Drenner, just great footwork. Here, coming into here. And you can totally see how it's important for Carolinas to be sideways here. Right? His guy is now running away. 26 is moving out here. And if he goes with him, all he's doing is creating this lane for – Rambo to feed Trenner and putting huge pressure on Glaze, particularly if his guy can get up to this back pipe or sneak to that pipe. Does everybody see that? This is, I'm not saying this is what Rambo's thinking, but that's what I'd be thinking, particularly if this guy has his back turned. But so you can see how important it would be for him to swing around here, to, to be cognizant of that but to swing around right here to help with that skip lane to Drenner. All right, so it comes out of that role, and right because of the ball pressure and, and, and this pivot that Rambo, frankly, is great at, he scores on a question mark here earlier in the game. So he scores on this goal, I think maybe the first goal of the game. But, you know, Landis rides his back a little bit, which is dangerous because uh, – Rambo has a good, really good right hand. But Rambo pivots out of this, and because of the real subtle stick check there, it, I'm telling you right now, if Landis had wound up the slash, this is a goal. But by just keeping it there and being really subtle and disruptive with the head of his stick, you know, it affects the quality of this. But just to reiterate how, why it's important for – this guy to maybe be down here a little bit. And for Carol Lewis, who's so good in the skip lane, 
who's so good picking off these passes. He makes a, a pick off earlier in this game. But if he's a little bit like that and being a lefty is an extra bonus, now maybe he can't throw that pass or he has to throw that pass, leaving him a little bit more, which makes it closer to Apple and closer to, to Glaze. And so, but playing as a stick affects the quality of that pass. You know, just a little bit. It's tailing away from, from Drenner, and that's enough to give, you know, Apple a chance to, to, to recover and, and play out. And, it, you know, but this is, you know, this is basically the center of the ground ball that happened in the previous clip. They send three people. Great little lift from, uh, I think that's Connor Kelly. Watch this play on this defensive. He lifts them so Apple can't scoop it, and then that keeps it live again. And this is just a ridiculous nugget by Carolinas. All right. So those are, I'm going to escape out of this wall. Can I come back to the, I just hit my, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'll just go right there. Nope. See if there's, uh, see if there's some. Um, all right, we'll look at, at some questions. Hate, hate. <laughs> oh. oh, yeah, we've right. got some. Um, okay, first question What drill do you practice to work on communication between defenders? Um, we, we do a drill called uh, Simon Says. I think it's somewhere on the, on the internet machine. Um, where you just you can do it in a group of two, three, four, however you want. It's usually best somewhere between two and, and four people. And you can practice using your teammate's name. You can practice using your language. You can practice telling him doing what to do. I think one of the real benefits of it is for your short sticks who might be in in a support role and you know, you know, a freshman or a sophomore having to tell an upperclassman what to do. And you can get great practice being loud and using your kind of one and two syllable words to, you know, practice the, the terminology that's central to your defense. So I think if you look up shedding, not shedding, uh, Simon says on the internet somewhere, you'll be able to find it. And, um, you know, that, it's, that's something that we do four or five times a week in our practices because it's, Everybody's always talking about how important communication is, but there's, it's really hard to practice it. But then I think the other thing you can do is whatever drills you're already doing, mandate a, uh, a communication component or decision-making component that requires somebody to tell somebody else what to do. And it's like anything else, you have to practice being allowed because it, that's not natural. And it's really not natural for an underclassman to tell an upperclassman what to do. And it may not natural, be natural for an offensive mini or a one-way mini to be tell a defenseman what to do. So you can practice it. Uh, OK. Yeah. Um, how do you get middies to help on slides when ball is at x or below GLE? You know, it, it, it's one of those things that's kind of a natural, you know, regardless of where guys are coming from, the, the the idea of I don't want my man to score is a is is a real thing, you know. They think you know from from recruiting they're they're worried about not making bad plays, even though their definition of a bad play might not be the same as the coaches who are evaluating them. So their natural default is to focus on their guy, whether it's club and and, and club lacrosse in particular. I'm not saying that those guys don't teach team defense. I think they do, but they have so little time with them. But sometimes what they teach could be counter what they're being taught from their high school team. So you got this unnatural uh, conflict and tension between those two, you know, high school coach, club coach, one teaching one thing, one teaches another, one has the guys for four months a year, another group has them for two months a year. So I think their natural 16-year-old brain tells them, I'm going to face guard my guy, or I'm not going to help, or I know it's important to play team defense, but I really want to score because that's what's going to make me stand out at a recruiting event. Um, so that's why you see such, you know, kind of in general poor defense, team defense in the summer is it's just, you know, they're going to default to what they're trying to, you know, what they like to do. Uh, and, and they don't want to look bad. So how you practice it is you got to do, you know, you got to, you know, obviously articulate your guys, the importance of being a two-way midi. I don't, I, 
you know, other than a goalie and a, maybe a face-off guy, they might not be a more valuable person on your team. So, you know, you know, obviously doing the small group drills, you know, giving them reps. You know, if you're not finding reps in your practice for your de- your omitties to play defense, they're going to default down to guarding their guy. And so, the, you know, the big picture answer to your question is is do you know do small group stuff where they have to make decisions. Four on fours is a great thing to do above the goal or maybe a two on two with two attackmen below and, and a, a defenseman and a midi above where, where they have to cover a lot of space and they realize the stance that they have to be in and how they have to orient themselves to play defense, how they have to be aware of their man but really be cognizant of their role too. So small group drills really kind of help and then when you build up to a six on six, using film to highlight guys doing things right, I think becomes really important. And, um, but you have to do the build up. It's not just about guarding your man. You're going to be off ball 90% of the time anyway. So giving them reps in off ball drills becomes really important. Um, okay. Um, no more questions. Just